Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Measure It Chrome plugin for measuring website image sizes. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Google Chrome. And in Google Chrome, I'm going to type into the search engine Measure It. So it's Measure IT Chrome plugin. And I'm going to go to this link here. And I'm going to install this particular plugin as 30,000 installations. That's quite a popular plugin. And I use this quite often when I want to measure spaces for images that I want to add to a website. So if I click add Chrome and then click add extension. So we've added this extension. And when I left click outside, it's going to hide the extension. So I want to click here, scroll down, find it, and then click the pin icon to pin it, right? So now it's pinned to the, pinned to the um, bar up here, this toolbar right here. So if I go to... Uh, a website let's find a website I recently completed this website actually so let's use this one it's called Alva PC so it sells PC components at really affordable prices if you want to go and check out this website then feel free to go to Alva A L V A P C dot co dot UK and you can check out some of the products that they've got on sale but for example when I was making the tutorial for this client so that they understand how to update their website this was one of the tools that I explained for them to use and I'm going to show you how I use it as well. Let's take this image for example, this particular image right here. If I wanted to uh, measure the size and the width and the height exactly, um, there's a couple of ways to do that. I could right click on the image, open it in a new tab, right? so I can open image in a new tab and I can see it's 510 by 380 pixels. But I didn't know that until I created the image, right? So I've got this blank space here, you can imagine. So what I normally do is take the measure it tool and imagine this was a blank space right here. I could just take this tool and then roughly measure out what the size would be and then just take away a few pixels or add a few pixels to get it nice and even, nice round number. So if we measure it here, for example, we can see that the image is roughly going to be 510 pixels by 380. So I'll click here, then I'll write this down, 510 by 380. Then I can open up Photoshop or GIMP software, go and find an image, crop it, size it, compress it, and then I can upload it to the website. And I know that image is going to fit nicely on the website. To, to disable the plugin, just click on it one more time, and it'll be disabled. You can see it sits nicely at the top and nicely at the bottom here, and it fits nicely into this particular space. So I use this same plugin on my own website. So if I, if I speak to one of my designers, I say to them, look, you need to update this image here. I can just send them a screen capture and I can just go ahead and just measure it out and say to them, look, please create an image, which is going to be 490 by 710, 490 by 710. That's probably the exact size of that image anyway. We can double check that by right clicking on it. I think actually this image is actually going to be a, an SVG. So it's actually a scalable vector graphic, so it's not really a JPEG file. So it doesn't really have a fixed width and height, the actual image itself, because it's all based on uh, it's all based on calculations, right? There's, there is, a, it's not actually a JPEG. It's just based on numeric values. This particular image, so it's an SVG. That's something a bit different, but I can still measure out the size. And when we write the code, we can say it needs to be this particular size, right? So that's what that's how I use the, the, this plugin. Um, on my own website, I use that inside my portfolio. So when I'm going to create some artwork like the header, there's no point in creating a graphic that's you know all the way down here when it doesn't need to be. It only needs to cover the height. So whenever we create images or content for our websites, we want to try and create it at the minimum size possible, not the maximum size. So we want, whenever we create an image, if it's um, you know created correctly. Uh, we can reduce the amount of file size because we're not creating an image that comes all the way down here but never gets used that part of the content that's quite important so we always know that this is going to be like this is HD resolution anyway so I know it's 1080 wide or close enough to that uh, so it'd be 1920 wide or just underneath that um, but the height is quite important as well so we can measure this out we can always just drag from here actually just to measure out the height we can say it's like around 550 pixels so normally i'll go a little bit more maybe about 580 just so there's a little bit of a an extra gap here just in case i need it for later but that should be good 
right that's good to go and I use that same strategy for all the different pictures on my website once I know the image size for one image I can just replicate it across throughout the whole website and throughout my whole portfolio I can stick to a standard size image this just helps workflow and speeds things up we can create a template in Photoshop and say that it's going to be this wide and this high and then when we go and create our artwork we always know that template is going to be used for these particular images just in the same way that I create the images here these are always going to be 1280 by 720 this image will always be 1280 by 720 right this is a nice way to um, optimize and um, focus on what size images should be but then also to create them in the right size so that you don't end up creating something too big and it just takes a little bit longer to load Google's very you know um, very specific about trying to get your images compressed as best as possible but retaining quality so it's a bit of a balancing act yeah and I see a lot of websites that I work on not particularly worked on but when customers come to me and they show me their websites and I look at their their website this is the size of the image that they need but they go and create an image which is massive is like bigger than the monitor screen and then they just kind of resize it inside of their software whatever they've used WordPress or whatever and um, just takes longer for that image to load so we can create and know exactly the size of the image that we need to create then we can optimize that image for it to load really really fast right so when we click on these pages and we click here you can see things are loading quickly when we navigate around the website and we click on things it's almost instant loading right we want everything to load very very fast and google likes that and guess what your customers will like it as well okay so that's how i go about using the measure it chrome plugin to measure website images for my own projects and also for client projects and that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel where you can access over 650 free video tutorials and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial